The story continues with the Lee's royal army evacuating citizens, because there's a big dragon attack happening near the city's border. The king is told that too many refugees are coming to the capital, but he says to let them all in and not worry about the future. There's a head on a sword that Ultimatia kept, and it's somehow still alive. It talks about how people, even if they're proud or capable, look lifeless after they die because their spirit is gone. Ultimatia arrives and is surprised that the head hasn't burned up yet. She tells the head about their evil plan, which is already in motion. In ten days, they'll give all the people in the capital a peaceful death, which is what Ultimatia wants. She punishes the guy for interrupting her and tells him that the ninth seed of the dragons, Dornia, was defeated by the second princess of the kingdom, Starlia Leeds. So she sent the fifth and sixth seats, Terectra and Olto Zoro, after her. The guy asks what she wants him to do, and she says that the third and eighth seats, Disaz Twa and Temriwagta, as well as the tenth seat, Grimwell, have disappeared. These are the three dragons defeated by Ragna. The guy with only a head thinks it might be Solarians or dragons from a different bloodline, but Ultimatia says the elder told her it's an entirely unknown threat. The guy gets excited about this information and Ultimatia punishes him again for his reckless actions that caused his head to be removed. He asks her to give him his heart back, promising not to mess around. She agrees but says his punishment is only temporarily suspended. She tells him to take care of the unknown threat, and we learn that this dangerous-looking guy is the second seat, Walt Camuy, with lightning claws. He asks for a kiss as a reward if he succeeds, but Ultimatia refuses and gives him a good punch, saying he never learns his lesson. The guy says he loves making Ultimatia mad and speeds away like lightning. We see what happened in Ragna's future. He got into this terrible situation by chasing the blood of the wing, and he lost. Ragna is surrounded by all 12 seated drivagons of the winged monarch, and he's angry with himself for surviving without achieving anything while all other humans have perished. He tries to shout, but he's kicked by the seventh seat dragon, Borgias. Borgias tells Ragna to be quiet because they're in front of the winged monarch. Then, he asks all the dragons to share their opinions about what they should do with Ragna. The twelfth seat dragon, Chanteras, says they have no choice but to end Ragna's life. All the dragons are evil and want to end his life, the only dispute is how to do it. Some want to eat him, others want to use him for experiments, and a few don't care. One strangely wants to end his life with the least pain. Ragna is filled with rage as his enemies stand in front of him, but he can't move. In this future, Leo died, and Ragna wishes he had died instead. He condemns his weakness but realizes that this time, even his life won't be spared. He's tired of enduring and wonders if he can finally find peace as they plan to take his life. Unfortunately for Ragna, Walt Kamui can sense that Ragna is feeling relieved at the thought of dying. Walt Kamui is a psychopath and decides they shouldn't kill him. He wants Ragna to live in a living nightmare. Some others disagree, but Walt Kamui insists he won't show mercy to anyone. Kami asks if anyone has an issue with it, and Ultimatia speaks up by destroying Walt Kamui. Ultimatia doesn't like people who disrupt harmony in the group and tells Walt Kamui to be quiet. She asks everyone to consider her opinion and shockingly reveals that she wants to welcome Ragna into their bloodline. Walt Kamui disagrees, and Ultimatia puts a blade through his head. She introduces herself to Ragna as a progenitor of the blood of the wing. She notices that his sword is similar to those used by dragon hunters in a certain kingdom which she thought was beautiful but burned to the ground. Ultimatia thought she wiped out every living creature from that country, but now she realizes Ragna is the lone survivor. She believes it must be God's will for him to continue living. Ultimatia is really happy that Ragna survived, and the sixth seat, Ulto Zora, explains what she means by welcoming him into their bloodline. It means she wants to turn Ragna into a dragon. Grimwald explains that inferior dragons are just beasts born from the blood of superior dragons, while superior dragons like them can take on human form. They were all given blood by their progenitor, and used to be humans. Ragna is shocked by all this, and he's told he should be happy because he's getting the gift of evolving into a life form much higher than humans. But Ragna refuses because he's filled with rage, especially for the lives they've taken, like his friend Leo's. He angrily tells them to end his life, but they explain that once he becomes a dragon, his hatred will fade away. Ultimatia wants to save him from his living nightmare, and is about to start the transformation by thrusting her blood blade into his heart. Ragna begs her to stop, but she encourages him not to worry. She assures him that he'll still be himself, only his way of seeing the world will change. She plunges the sword into him, and the transformation begins painfully. Ultimatia whispers that this is her ultimate atonement, her way of making up for everything. Back in the present, Ragna wakes up and wonders if he's remembered anything useful. He ignores the thought to think about how Crimson is a real scoundrel, but he still prefers her over Ultimatia. 
Crimson, in his eyes, is straightforward about being a jerk, while Ultimatia acts kind and tender but commits mass murder on a massive scale. Ragna despises Ultimatia with all his beat and vows to hunt her down again. Crimson is also doing some thinking and wonders what price Ragna would be willing to pay to use his full power, which is still unknown at this point. She'd rather wait a few years and prepare thoroughly before attempting to fight Ultimatia. Unfortunately, she knows that the Blood of the Wing is aware of their missing comrades, and she's certain they'll release Wolt Kamu, their strongest dragon. Given this, she decides it's time to ambush Ultimatia. Crimson has a plan in case Ragna loses, and explains that he's an irreplaceable tool for her. They arrive at the capital, and we learn that Crimson hopes to see the winged janitor. We then see Ultimatia talking to her god, who's like a small child. The god wants everything useless destroyed, but the kid doesn't even know what the Lee's kingdom is. Ultimatia decides that Lee's kingdom no longer exists in her god's mind, so it must be obliterated. The dragons will carry out her god's will. Ultimatia seems a bit unstable as she mourns the deaths of her fellow seated dragons. She explains they weren't fit to be part of their bloodline or their god's limbs. She hopes that destroying Lee's kingdom can be an offering to them. Ragna's group arrives in a busy part of the city, and Crimson explains they need to go through the second castle to reach the old district. She wants them to call her Veronica for now, but Ragna isn't listening and is feeling sick in the crowd. Crimson asks what's wrong, and he explains crowds make him feel sick. Crimson mentions that the city he lived in before was big, but he was okay because Leo was always with him. Crimson wonders if they should call off the hunt, but Ragna is determined to end Ultimatia's life if he sees her, no matter how sick he feels. Crimson shows some care and tells him to think of her as Leo's replacement, but he says she could never replace his cherished friend. Crimson tells him to go end himself, and Ragna vomits again. They eventually reach the old district, and Crimson leaves Slime with Ragna to make preparations. She reminds him to stay hidden and not mention the enemy's name or hers. She instructs him to walk away if someone approaches and return to the same place after five minutes. Crimson asks him to repeat her instructions, and Ragna summarizes it as not standing out and staying quiet. Crimson leaves and notices that there are a lot of people around, but something isn't right. The influx of evacuees to the capital should have surpassed 2 million, but the city should be flooded with people. This suggests that the dragons are maliciously reducing the number of people without anyone noticing, like a stomach digesting food. A massacre of the entire population is imminent. In the castle, Nebulum has finished his executions for the day and explains to the armed dragon, Borgus. Borgus asks where is Ultimatia. Nebulum says that she has left as she wanted to see the condition of the evacuee. Borgus is shocked to hear that she went out in public and scolds Nebulum for not stopping her, as it's their duty as mature dragons to protect the progenitor from her impulsive behavior. Borgus has no time for apology, so Nebulum tells him that she is in the old district. Elsewhere, the lieutenant general is handling important business and is interrupted by Crimson. Scene changes and he's on his knees, begging Crimson to inform him about her visits in the future. He pretends it's to properly welcome her. Crimson scolds him and reminds him that she ordered him to gather intelligence by impersonating a high-ranking army officer. His real name is Golem, and he explains that he did his job. She also commands a girl named Chimera to come out and tells her that Ragna will face off with Ultimatia. This shocks everyone, and she explains that they all need to cooperate if they want any chance of winning. Meanwhile, Ragna and the slime go to see what people are gathering for. They uncover several frozen dead dragons under a tarp. The citizens are told that their city is facing an unprecedented level of dragon attacks. A man gives an inspiring speech, and as the sun burns up the dragons, he reveals that their army has defeated hundreds of dragons. He assures everyone that they will exterminate every last dragon that poses a threat to the kingdom. The crowd erupts in cheers. The little slime thinks the humans are getting a bit carried away, and mentions that he could swallow the entire crowd in under 60 seconds. Ragna decides to leave but then he's absolutely stunned as a girl in a hoodie walks by him. His mind races back to one final thing Crimson told him before she left. She said that if by any chance he ran into Ultimatia, he must not attempt to fight her alone because that would surely end the hunt. Despite the seemingly impossible odds, Ragna finds himself in that exact situation. Ultimatia has just walked by him, and rage overwhelms every inch of his body. Even more surprisingly, Ultimatia, not knowing who he is yet, comes back to check on him. She tells him that he looks awfully sick and asks if he's ill. Ragna struggles to contain his fury. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel for more anime recaps.